the first thing you want to do before you start messing with your AC compressor is turn off the power to it. I would say turn off the power first to the actual on your house that goes to the compressor. And if you can't do that, there'll be a box that's right here that you can go inside of and be able to pull out the actual like a fuse or to be like a link pretty much that will stop the power from going to your AC compressor. It's very important that you do. I'm about to do that now. Now to open up this box, normally what you have to do is take a little tab down here. Just press down on it. When you press down, you can pop it out like that. And once you do, you kind of want to slide it down, up, and then push it in. This one's a little old, so I'm having a problem. Push it in, and it should stay up. And what you'll see inside of there, I've already pulled out the actual, I guess you would call it the fuse, or the connectors that will bring the power to the AC unit. And what that looks like is right here. Basically, basically what this is, this is inside of your box up in that slot and you'll see it look like this you just want to pull it out if this is the type that you have you may have something a little different but in mind this is what I have and a lot of people have these same type you just pull this out of here and once you've done that that took the power away from the actual compressor itself so now the next thing that you want to do once again also make sure that your power is completely off too going to this box i just turn off everything pull this out and turn the power off going to this box next what you want to do to change the capacitor normally it'll be like a, a access panel like right here you can see can be removed and once you remove these screws one right here one at the bottom it'll be two on the other side this whole panel will come off i'm about to show you that now Okay, as you can see now, I've removed the actual panel itself, and when I have did that, you're able to see now, actually right here, in that circle, that cylinder circle thing right here, that's your capacitor. If you're dealing with capacitors, always remember, before you go touching on them or doing anything like that to them, you always want to understand that this capacitor pretty much has an electrical charge to it. And what you need to do first is discharge the electricity from the capacitor before you go installing it or just handling it. And the way to discharge the electricity from it is basically you need to use, you can use different ways you can discharge it, but if you have, as long as you have an insulated screwdriver with basically with rubber on the handle part that you hold and a pair of gloves pretty much and you can discharge the charge that could be on the capacitor that could actually harm you if you was to accidentally touch and shock you so to do this what you want to do is pretty much is touch the common to the fan that discharges on that side and also touch the common to the herm the discharge on that side I'm about to be showing you now exactly how to do it what you're going to need to do this is first of all get you a pair of gloves I basically have them like some insulated heat type resistant gloves also you want to get a screwdriver some type of a screwdriver that basically has a rubber handle on it you want to make sure it's not like a screwdriver that's you know half broken to where the metal part of it is sticking out through the back of it or something like that you want to have you a well insulated screwdriver with rubber on the handle that you hold then what you're going to be doing pretty much is touching from your common to your fan and then from your common to your herm and I'm about to be doing that now to show you how to do it. So the first thing you want to do when you look at your capacitor you want to locate your one that says common like on this one right here I can see the C on it that says common on this one and this side says uh, is this your herm? Yeah this side is your herm and this side is your fan so to discharge what I'm going to be doing is taking this screwdriver and kind of, like I said, make sure that you have a rubber insulated screwdriver. You don't want to be no pieces of metal or nothing sticking out, broken, anything like that. And also you want to make sure that you have on a pair of gloves just for added security. So what you're going to be doing 
is taking that, kind of sticking it through the middle, through there. Then you're going to want to touch. This is the common I first touch it on first. And then I'm going to touch the other side like this. Hold on. Okay. See, I'm touching both of them like that. So see, there's no sparks or nothing like that. So that's telling me that there's no actual buildup of electricity between these two sides, which is the fan and the comet. Now I'm going to do the other side. So see, I'm touching right now the common and the fan. Next one I'm going to do is go to the other side and touch the common and the herm. Same thing, slide it through. See, I'm touching on that side, and I'm going to touch the other side. You may hear a, hear a discharge. Okay. See how you don't hear anything? Well, that's telling me that there's no buildup electricity up there. If there was a buildup on it, you would hear a loud snap sound. Basically, a loud electrical discharge sound. When I touched it between the common, do it again, and the hern. So I'm touching the two of them and there's no sound. That's what you want. You may want to do that a few times. You may want to do it a couple different times just to be sure there is no buildup of electricity. And then go back again to the common and to the fan side of it and touch that again like that also. See what I'm doing? I'm basically taking the screwdriver and I'm sticking it through this opening to make sure I make contact on both. Contact with the common and with the fan at the same time. Get a better angle. Okay, now you can see. See, I'm touching both of them at the same time. And by doing this, if there was a buildup of electricity, it would discharge that buildup. You may hear a loud snapping sound, like electrical discharge sound. Like I said, you want to always make sure you use an insulated screwdriver that completely has rubber around the back of it. You don't want to have a screwdriver that has like a crack in the back of it or just a plastic type screwdriver. You want something with rubber on it and you also want to wear some type of a gloves when you're doing this. I have a new capacitor, which is this one right here I'm going to be putting in. And what you want to do sometimes is look at the top of your capacitors. See, this is brand new. So it should look nice and flat at the top of it. As well as the bottom of it should be nice and flat to when you set it down. It sets down nice and flat. This is the one I took out, which I believe is bad. The top of it pretty much looks pretty flat. But as you can see, at the bottom of it is actually rocking is wobbling around which means it's kind of bowed out if you can see like when I'm moving it it's like it's actually rocking see this one doesn't do that at all it's completely flat against the uh, actual and the bottom of it's flat against the ground and this one as you see is still rocking it's like it's bowed out and that's a sign that your capacitor has blown pretty much what's going on people I'm about to show you how you can figure out which kind of capacitor that you need to change out your home AC compressor if your capacitor has gone bad. There's different specs on different capacitors. What you want to do is make sure that you get the one that's correct for your AC compressor. And what you'll be looking for is these numbers right here. You see on this one it says 35 plus 5. And right here it says 370 pretty much volts. So if your capacitor has 35 plus 5, that's the one that you need, and 370 volts. Sometimes you may be able to go up, but you're not supposed to never go down. So you may be able to use, say, a 45 plus 5 or a 440 volt. But I would try to stay with the exact same strength of a capacitor that's already in your AC unit. So this is how you would tell. You take out your old capacitor and look for these numbers right here you have 35 plus 5 370 volts that's the new one that you would want to get in case you're going to order one from offline or something like that once again this is how you would tell what capacitor that you need for your ac unit